to a uh, turn raise there. I'm going to bet again. I, uh, he leads into me. This is interesting. I'm just going to call. There's going to be a lot of cards that make me uh, chop my jack. I may occasionally be behind. Raising for value there is certainly not bad. I don't think he has ace high very often, but I'm just going to kind of get a feel. And, uh, and there's also, I guess, a small problem with him not paying me off with a worse hand, though that may not be a problem. Um, so raising there is actually okay. Uh, I certainly don't necessarily mind that. If I had something, that, if I had the queen of diamonds to go along with my hand, I really wouldn't mind that all too much. Um, you know, I could consider uh, you know check raising the river here, but again, because he hasn't raised me at this point, he probably doesn't have an eight. Uh, he almost, you know, he almost certainly doesn't have a ten. So it's either he has a five or ace high, or in this case, uh, king deuce, and he's willing to pay me off so light uh, that I am actually uh, it will very much discourage me. Uh, from so even though I, I may often be behind here, I'm just going to raise because I have that much equity, and um, I'm going to fall through and see if I can default it. again. It's just one of those things where I have to pick up the pot uh, so often. Fish, that's awful. He says, "What happened?" I don't know what he thinks I did, but uh, the, the the fellows who uh, make those sort of, sort of remarks are usually the soft spots. And so far, I'm actually very pleased with this action for this limit. This is a very uh, good opponent to have. Uh, so I'm going to raise right away to try and get some extra action in this time. And since last time, I uh, I'm now I'm going to uh, cap to feign a free card play and see if I can get some even more action that way. Uh, the 10 might kill it, uh, or sorry, the extra diamond might kill it, but uh, I got the action anyways, and that's good. And I'll keep betting. And it looks I'm not entirely sure what he may have had there. Maybe he has some sort of over cards and a uh, diamond is possible. I'm just going to check with my 8-4 here and see what happens post-flop. Um, so what I'm going to do is if he bets... I could consider raising, but I'm just going to call and see if he gives up, because uh, I will almost never call here, and I think most people will know that, uh, unless I have some sort of uh, made hand, and very seldom will I call there with just some draw. Uh, so overall, you know, in a, first of all, in a game theory sense, I'm going to check my hand here and see if I can induce action. Against a lot of players, I don't think I can do that. And now I'm going to start betting. Uh, sometimes I will get check raised here, but I, well, I'm aware of that. I'm going to bet here. If I get check raised on this card, I may actually fold. Because most people, I find, when they get a chance to bluff, um, occasionally some people do a delayed river bluff. In this case, he had do three. Uh, but I think most people, uh, when they have a chance to bluff, uh, will you know just take the, the first chance. And he checks behind on a flop like this. I'm just going to test him. I want to know for the rest of the match whether or not he is uh, checking behind and giving up on dry flop. So I just want to test him this one time. And uh, I pick up an 8 on the river, so I'm value betting, assuming he has 8 high, or maybe a weak pair like I had, like a 4 or a 5. And it's interesting that he folded, so now that I know, he's willing to fold for some second bets. And occasionally with a uh, more advanced heads up play, you get into a bit of a leveling game there. So I'm going to lead up with my king high here, and see if I can just force him to react. I'm going to lead again, and I'm going to certainly call if he raises, and I'm probably going to consider calling a river bet. Um, okay, that doesn't make a straight card. I'm probably going to call this. Uh, he, he's been very aggressive with it, sort of got shut hands before. So he, he does pick up a card. And But it's the sort of thing where you get to the river, you're just getting the price to call. against Because when people raise on those really draw-heavy flops, their range is often quite polarized between bluffs and made hands. So if your opponent can only have the strong hands and the bluffs, what you usually find is that there are a lot of bluffs uh, you know, in relation to how many uh, actually strong hands that uh, your opponent can have. This is an interesting texture. I'm going to check uh, raised, assuming that uh, there are going to be some problems with this. Assuming that if my opponent has nothing, he, he will just give up. But the problem is, if I check raise a board like this, I think it's actually fairly obvious that I have hearts more often than I have an ace, just because of the way my range is rated. I could consider calling here. Occasionally, my parrots will be good, so I'm going to call, but I'm not going to contest it further than that. Um, you know, And I could consider doing something on the river, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to play a little bit more passively this time, and occasionally I'll open up and make a bigger move. So I'll keep betting here. If he raises, I'll call. Usually a, a raise on a turn like that. Um, so he can have something. That, the thing is, if he has diamonds, he might have the ace high diamond draw. He might have also made the jack. I'm going to raise and hope I get paid off. I think very, very seldom does he actually have diamonds. If there was, say, if uh, the uh, it was the three of clubs instead of the queen of clubs, I might be a bit more wary about that. But because top pair is the only non-diamond card, I think that uh, if he has a diamond, he's check raising that. Or if uh, he has a diamond draw, he's check raising that flop every time. Uh, so there's not really any diamond combos, or not very many, unless uh, he can have sort of a king high, ace high diamond combo, and not check raise, uh, that he can actually get to the river with. So I'm actually pretty comfortable raising there, uh, even though occasionally I will get free rolled. I'm going to uh, check behind. I'm going to maybe call some river cards as well. Uh, this is not necessarily the best one. Uh, he leads out into this. Um, it's still good in a lot of ways. Uh, 
I'm going to put a call. This is a little loose, uh, and we do chop it. Uh, again, uh, it's sort of a silly bet for him to make. I'm certainly not ever folding king high, and I'm probably not calling with a worse hand. But again, it's one of those things, because there's not really any way I can really exploit that. Um, I don't... A lot of people try and focus on their opponent's mistakes. I just try and focus on what I can take advantage of. I feel I save a lot of energy, a lot of hassle with that. A lot of people, when they peel a flop like this, uh, will usually have some sort of hand that's intending to show down. If he bets here, I'll just call, probably. Um, assuming that there are a lot of times where he will have the top end or the chop end, or he may not pay off. And certainly have uh, feasible for him to peel that with some sort of queen high hand. There are a couple hands, uh, like maybe queen eight, although I think he would usually check raise with a stronger jaw. Um, it, it would actually be a little bit close, but I do kind of lean towards just calling in that particular scenario. So another very good flop for me, and I'll just keep betting. And it uh, looks like I'm locked up for this hand, so I'm just going to stuff money in the pot. And uh, you know, not too interesting, but uh, certainly a good result. Nice queen, I'm just going to come up with a 3-bet. I'm not going to be using my auto buttons because this guy limps a lot, so I will lean away from that. It gives away a little bit of information. I don't mind leading out here uh, to try and encourage extra action if he has a weaker hand. Um, I'm going to bet here, hoping he calls me with a... Uh, and I'm going to call the raise, uh, hoping that uh, he will call me still with an ace-high hand or maybe some other hand. It's very close, uh, but if it's one of those things where if I'm calling a bet anyways, if I bet into him... Um, so I'm going to raise right away, again, trying to garner action. He may be bluffing some of the time, so I'm going to call now and raise the turn. But it's one of those uh, situations where my, my hand is somewhat strong enough to still be called by a weaker hand, particularly since this guy seems very willing uh, to uh, go to showdown uh, you know, uh, very generously. And um, it's one of those situations where if I'm going to be calling a bit anyways against most diamonds, and he was willing to raise with the uh, non-diamond uh, draw there, which is certainly okay on his part, and uh, this 9 makes so many hands that I'm actually almost willing to check and fold. Now I'm going to uh, put in a value bet and hope he uh, snaps off a call with ace high. Or uh, or maybe a weaker pair could have checked behind as well. Uh, but again, in the... Uh, so, fucking finish. Uh, in the... Uh, hmm. So he leads into me. Traditionally, when he's le uh, led into me, he's actually had strong hands. I'm just going to give up now. The 6 makes some more hands. Uh, but... Uh, and so I get in the ace-queen hand, which a lot of people may find out of sorts, is I'm just expecting him to call with most diamond hands. If I checked, I would be calling a bet anyways. I do believe he can call me off with some worse hands. Uh, so it is, again, very close. I'm not going to say it's necessarily the strongest play. but uh, So I'm just going to come over top here. Occasionally, so now my hand is uh, seldom best. I'm still going to put in a sort of a crying call in the river. Now I'm going to check raise. If he 3-bets, I'm probably going to cap. It looks like he's maybe freaking out a bit. Uh, but I don't necessarily uh, like leading into that. Uh, because I think it may, if he has a somewhat weaker hand, uh, it, it will also prevent him from checking behind. Uh, <laughs> so really, I, I, I don't think I've ever reported somebody to uh, full tilt support for uh, chat report or like chat abuse before, but I may do it for this guy. Um, it certainly doesn't bother me, although I, I guess for my own advantage, it's kind of good to see. Uh, when he's getting emotional, uh, but that's certainly uncalled for. One of the nice things I find about playing high limit games is many of the opponents are pretty cordial. If I can play against most of the people I play against, if I'm playing a match, you know, we can play and somebody can lose fifty thousand dollars and say, you know, good game. I'll, uh, you know, try and uh, play against you sometime next week or something like that. And I, I find it's a very good sort of athletic environment where everybody is competitive. You know, trying to uh, play their game. And so now I, I've turned a double gut shot. I'm going to uh, call this one. And on Not Hunt River, I'm certainly going to feel inclined to call as well. I will be good seldom here, but I'm still going to put in the call. And he does have the 8. But uh, it's just, again, one of those things where if you can only have, say, maybe a uh, middle pair or better, or any of the heart draws, which I'll, many of them will be paired as well. So again, I'm just going to call. Uh, and I'm going to, the times he's bluffing doing this, this makes it tougher, but occasionally I think he's going to be bluffing. I'm going to have a chop with at least one of the hands, so I'm going to keep calling. I could uh, bet here against ace high, but I'm not going to do it. And he has the chop nine. And so I do appreciate that. It's uh, most of the people playing at these limits are just mostly concerned about uh, you know playing their game uh, and just you know playing poker and having some fun with that. So I'm going to put in one call here. See what he does on the turn. This is a, a somewhat poor turn card for me. I'm just going to actually give it up. Not because it necessarily changes uh, my equity as m much more than any other card, but it does change the texture of the board a bit.